Sir, my name is Vasikaran. I am a Christian. And we are told that the crusaders and the crusades were waging a holy war. I am a Christian, sir. I am a journalist. We were told that the crusaders and the crusades were waging a holy war. And now after seeing the films, we know how ter much terrorism they did to the innocent Muslims. And do, do you not think that uh, this religious terrorism started from these crusades? And it is in another way, it continues against the Muslims through all these centuries. The big, now this terrorism seems to be in uh, another phase. And, uh, why these Westerners are always, after the Crusades, continuing this uh, sort of thing against them? Uh, well, that's a very good question. He being a Christian, he says that he was told that the Crusades were holy war, and that's what I told you. The Orientalists used this word, holy war, for jihad. It was nothing but the usage of holy war, was well, another name for crusade, to see to it that everyone joins and think it's religious. And the brother, being a journalist, as rightly said, that now we realize that these crusades were nothing but terrorizing the innocent Muslims. I didn't say anything about this in my talk because I came here to speak about the Islamic concept. I didn't touch on any religion, negative point of any religion, neither do I want to touch. It is just, I said that all religion prescribe fighting to let peace prevail. That's what everyone does. I never touched on any religion. That's not what I've come here for. But if you ask me a question, I have to say, yes, you're right, brother that the crusade did terrorize the innocent Muslims. And that's how it has continued. And now, the same thing what they do, they are now saying the same thing to the Muslims, which if you analyze, you see in the world around you. You see in the world around you, that how many people are actually accepting it. Today, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. There may be strange incidences somewhere in the world. There are black sheep in every community. But you will not be able to point out as a whole that where in the world are people forcing other non-Muslim to accept Islam at the point of the thought? No way. In fact, they are getting harassed because they are Muslims. Now, this thing can only be solved if you go back, if you go back to the Bible. If you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 40, 41, he says that if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, offer him the other. If anyone strikes you on the right cheek, offer him the other. If someone asks you to walk one mile, you walk with him twain. If someone asks for the shirt, you give him the cloak. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, a messenger of Almighty God, he shows us how peace should prevail. He says, love your neighbor. So if you analyze, if you go back to the scripture, I don't find any way where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself prescribed that you should harass the Muslims. So therefore I tell all the human beings that go back the scripture which you consider to be the most holiest, whichever scripture you consider, at least go back to your scripture, as the Quran says in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 64, Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah, na uda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. And this I'll be dealing tomorrow in the topic Universal Brotherhood, that how can we get communal harmony by going back to the scriptures, and if you go back to the scriptures, you'll find that the concept of universal brother is the one in all scriptures. Hope that's the question. Hello. My name is Sri Ilai Raja. Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, and the most beneficent. The Prophet Muhammad, Rasulullah, let peace be upon him. Actually, I am a non-Muslim. My brother is Saifullah. Actually, he is standing the dais. Everyone can see him. He has embraced Islam in my family. And he is having so much problem with the parents, actually. That is not my question now. Actually, I belong to the fraternity of law. Actually, I finished law and I am doing my... Excuse me, brother. Sorry to interrupt you. I am really sorry. This is not a lecture time. We are in the question and answer session. I want you to be precise and to the point. Please come to your question. Thank you. Actually, you are free to ask a question. Please speak a bit slowly and clearly so that we can hear. Okay. Brother, Brother can okay. continue. And as far as the non-Muslims, I would just like to just make a suggestion to them see that the non-Muslims can ask any question in topic, out of the topic. This is the opportunity. They don't get the opportunity. I would not mind answering any question. If it's a non-Muslim, 
it will be my pleasure to answer any question in the topic or the topic on religion on any religion it will be a pleasure yes brother most welcome to continue yeah, actually i tend my apology for wasting the time for the respectful brother actually here is a situation after the september 11th and before the september 11th from the kenya and tanzania bombings in uh, actually by the u.s embassies about Osama bin Laden, actually. Every people in the society are talking about Osama bin Laden and Islam. They are measuring, measuring Islam with Osama bin Laden. And my brother and we used to say Islam is different and Osama bin Laden is different. Actually, I want a simple question as a knowledge of Islam, Islamic theology and a person who follows the religion of God, what is their view? Can Muslims tell separately, openly that Islam is different and Osama is different, Osama bin Laden? And my second question is basically for my friend. Actually, he is a disabled person, he is physically handicapped, he is asking whether there is any intention of the God or there is any verse or any saints of the Prophet Muhammad. What is the criteria for a God to create handicapped or disabled persons? That's it. And I think Mike will not be available after my asking the question. So, for the Islamic Information Center and Dr. Fatima Musafar and Dr. Zagin Naik, thanks for giving me this beautiful opportunity. Thank you. The brother has asked basically two questions. The first part of the question was regarding comments from Osama bin Laden. The second part was what is the reply that God Almighty has created disabled people in the world? The first question that why should Osama bin Laden be linked with Islam? Islam is different, Osama bin Laden is different. And what are my views regarding Osama bin Laden? Brother, as far as Osama bin Laden is concerned, I personally have not met him. <laughs> I don't know him personally. And this question was asked to me in Australia when I was there a few months back in Perth that do you consider Osama bin Laden as a terrorist? So I gave the same reply that I personally don't know Osama bin Laden. I don't know him. I haven't met him. If you are going to ask and say that based on the news that I get from the media, whether it be BBC, CNN, etc., then if I agree with that news, I have no option but to label him as a terrorist. But the glorious Quran says in Surah Hujurat, chapter number 49, verse number 6, it says that whenever you get information about something, check it up before you pass on to the second person or the third person. As far as Osama bin Laden is concerned, I don't know him personally, I haven't met him. I cannot base my answer just on the news reports. Unless the news reports are verified, but one thing I can say for sure that he was always called as a prime suspect on CNN. Prime suspect, prime suspect. Till today, prime suspect. Prime suspect number one. No proofs, proofs according to a normal human being who has a little bit logic. The proofs given, there were no proofs at all. What were the proofs? I am not here in favor of Osama bin Laden, he's not my friend, I don't know him. I'm neither saying he's good, I'm neither saying he's bad. But just to say on the prime suspect and just on suspicion to attack a country which is one of the least equipped country in the world. Quran says in Surah Ujura, chapter number 40 and verse number 12, avoid suspicion. For in many cases, suspicion is a sin. It says that. And this question was posed to me by the Vice Consul General of USA in Perth that do I consider Osama bin Laden a terrorist and who is a real terrorist? And the reply of mine came as headlines on the newspaper in Perth which I feel I'm thinking twice whether should I repeat that answer here or not. The reason is because I don't want to offend any of our guests that has come. He says that with proof, who should be the terrorist? And I told that Vice Consul General of US that as far as whatever knowledge I have, based on the reports of CNN and BBC, I cannot say that he is a terrorist at all. I am neither saying he's good, neither I'm saying he's bad. Otherwise, tomorrow you'll have the police doing inquiry on me, that another complex of Al-Qaeda. 